Okay, so this video will show you how to use Edpuzzle. And uh, as I stated, Edpuzzle is a wonderful tool for flipping the classroom. It takes video resources that already exist online and um, allows you to manipulate them um, and personalize them, make them your own, especially for your population of students. So the website is edpuzzle.com. That's E-D-P-U-Z-Z-L-E.com. Uh, this is a free resource. Uh, it is absolutely not paid. You don't need to petition your school to get you an account or anything like that. Um, from the main screen, you're going to go ahead and click Log In uh, and Teacher. Now, one of the nicest parts about uh, Edpuzzle is that you don't need to create a new account. You can actually just use your Google account. I know you probably all have Google accounts um, to go ahead and log in. So no separate need to register or anything like that. You don't need to click Sign Up. You can just click Log In with Google. If you have multiple Google accounts, um, this screen will pop up and ask you to choose an account. So if you've never logged in before, after you ch uh, click your account, it may say something like, do you allow Edpuzzle to use your account? And in that case, you would just click allow. Once you're logged into Edpuzzle, your screen is probably going to look something like this. It's going to kick you to a My Classes screen. So um, this is sort of your landing page. I'm going to show you how to set up classes later on. Right now, we're just going to go straight to My Content. There's a button up here that says My Content. And now I already have a bunch of videos I've created in here. Um, they're not even organized in folders yet, but um, I will show you that feature as well. Right now we're going to delve right into how do you create one of these video lessons. So if you click on this create button and then hover down to new video. Okay, and now as you can see, uh, we have over here all of the best video resources online. We've got YouTube, Khan Academy, LearnZillion, National Geographic. Okay, I'm sure at some point in your travels, you've used at least one of these awesome resources. So the nice thing is Edpuzzle pulls them all together, takes out all of those advertisements and all of the need for students to navigate to them um, and pulls them all into one spot. So let's say you want to do a lesson on um, mitosis. So I used to teach biology. So we're going to click in mitosis and I'm going to hit enter to search. So right now it's going to give me search results for all of these video resources. It's going to pull anything from Crash Course, anything from Number File, anything from National Geographic, and, and really put them all in one spot for me to look at all at once, which is really invaluable in and of itself. So if I scroll down, I can see all these great videos of mitosis. But let's say, you know, I really want a Khan Academy video. My kids really uh, seem to you know, respond well to that and I want a Khan Academy one. So if I click on Khan Academy, now it's only showing me Khan Academy videos that have to do with mitosis. So you can either search all these resources at once or just one. So from here, you can sort of browse through the videos. Um, it is loading more, so there's lots out there as you can see. Um, but let's say I just, you know, I click on this first one and you can even preview it right from here. You don't have to even leave to go to the website. You can just preview it right from here. So I'll click play. In a previous um, video, we talked about interphase, which is the bulk of a cell's life. All right, and let's say that I find this video and I'm like, all right, this is perfect. It's exactly what I need for my students. I can click on this use it video, or excuse me, use it button. If it's not what I'm looking for, I can just X out of it and search for a new video. But let's say it's perfect, I'm going to use it. So what this does is it grabs that video and launches this editing screen. This editing screen has four very important components along the top here. As you can see, we have crop, audio track, audio notes, and quizzes. So I'm going to go through each step and show you what they are. And they're in this timeline for a reason. They actually do have to be completed in chronological order like that. But it walks you through it really, really easily. So the first one is exactly what it sounds like. It's a crop tool. It lets you take any of these videos from any of these great resources and crop it. So I know that you've all encountered some video at some point in time that you're like, wow, this is really great, except I don't need the first minute and I definitely don't need this 30 seconds at the end. So this will allow you to actually take the video. There's two red slider bars here now and I can actually slide this forward and you can see my time going across the bottom there um, to whatever point in the video that you want.
So if let's say, well, obviously you have to watch it first and make sure that this is, you know, where you want to sort of leave off with your students. The nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane. You're like, okay, start. That's, that's perfect for what I want to start. And if you don't need, you know, all of this, I can actually take that in. And now only this portion of the video would be shown to my students. Okay, this, you know, two minutes, give or take. So what you cannot do is you can't crop like chunks out of the middle. So you can only crop off the beginning and end, and, and that's the limitation there. So, uh, and this is very much like Google in that it's saving automatically. So if you look up here, it's a saved a few seconds ago. It's saving my work as I go, but if I go like this and start making edits, it will, um, that'll go away and come back. Um, if you're paranoid and you really feel like you need to hit save, you can of course hit save over here and it's saving into your Edpuzzle library. So, um, and which is nice and it's what you saw a few minutes ago and you can certainly organize that, that into folders as well. So let's say you're done cropping. You're like, I'm good. You don't even have to crop if you like the whole video. Now you can click on the next step, which is audio track. So I'm clicking on audio track. All right, so now as you can see, it even took away those cropped portions. There's, you know, that beginning and end are gone. We're down to only 2 minutes and 54 seconds where it was like 12 minutes before. So audio track is interesting. This is something that is really valuable uh, for elementary school um, or even foreign languages is cool too. So this allows you to take whatever audio track was on the video and add your own if you want. So where I probably wouldn't use that that often, um, some teachers maybe if they want to better explain it to their students, they want to explain it in their own words. Um, maybe the narrator has like a super thick accent or talks really, really fast. Um, there's a, a, you know, a number of reasons why you may want to dub over the existing audio track and sort of narrate the video yourself. So really what you would do is you would click on the microphone here. And I'm not actually going to do this, but I'm going to click on the microphone. And depending on what web browser you're using, you're going to get a pop-up box that says, do you allow Edpuzzle to use the microphone? And of course, you click allow or click yes, whatever it is. And then the video starts playing and you literally start talking over top of it. And it does record your audio track um, and takes out the existing uh, narrator and what the, that narrator is saying. So that's the second tool. The next tool over is audio notes. So I'm going to click on audio notes. Now audio notes allows you to add again your voice, but this time as annotations. So it doesn't necessarily dub over the whole entire narration of the video, but it will stop the video at certain points and force the students to listen to your vi your audio notes. So let's say, at, and I'm just going to take this microphone little slider tool and I'm going to slide it to a certain part of the video. All right, so let's say um, I want the video to stop here. You know, something important's going on. I can actually click this microphone and now as you can see it's recording my voice and I could say to the students remember as the cell goes from prophase to metaphase uh, this is the shortest uh, phase of the cell cycle and I can click stop and as you can see I have a little tiny microphone up here now and it's at that point in the video so it's placed it on the timeline now I can go forward a little bit more and say I can it I can stop the video and say, okay, notice that here the DNA is coiling and the sister chromatids are forming. Stop. And it's added another audio note. So when your students actually watch this video, what's going to happen is it stops the video and they will get a little tiny box over here that says listen to a video note from your teacher. They'll, they will be forced to listen to it before they can go forward. Now, what they, can't, what they can do is they can take their slider bar and rewind the video as much as they want, but they won't be able to drag it forward and skip past your questions and audio notes. Um, and this is very, um, this is designed sort of park-like because in the park, they will be able to rewind it as many times as they want. So um, there are buttons down here to remove the notes um, or just remove the last note. So you can sort of slide this bar back and forth and add as many audio notes as you want. But I'm going to move on to the very last step here, and that's to add quizzes. So if I click on quizzes, and it's going to just give me a note here that says it's uploading my little audio notes. 
And depending on how long your audio notes are, that could take a moment. All right, I'm just going to remove the notes because I don't really want to wait for them um, to upload. So I'm going to click on quizzes. So the quizzes is very similar in that it gives me a little slider bar down here and lets me stop the video at any point in time and insert a question. So um, if I wanted, let's say, for it to stop right here and I want to ask the students a question, I can stop the slider bar, click on the question mark, and it allows me to insert a question. So there are three options. One, this first option, this is an open-ended question. So I could say, oops, sorry about that. So I could say, uh, what phase of mitosis is the cell in now? Okay, and I can click save. And that will actually see it put a little question up here. Again, it will force the students to stop at that point in the video, answer the question before they move on. They will be able to rewind but not fast forward past the question. So I can always come back in here and edit the question. I can delete it. I'm going to go back to edit just to show you that there are some more features in here, especially for those of you who are that are math teachers or... Um, you know, need to add a diagram or something like that, um, there are those options here as well. So you can actually add an image to the question, which is a really nice feature. So if you want to add a follow-up question, what did I just do? Oops. Oops. All right, so I accidentally refreshed it. That's okay. See, it saved my work, which is really nice. That was a it's a teachable moment here. Okay, so it did save my question. So like I said, it is very googly in that it saves my work automatically. So let's put it at another point in the video and I'm gonna click the question bar again to show you the other question type. So let's say I wanted to stop here. Um, the next tab over, this is open-ended, like we just said, and it actually gives the students a text box to write in. So there you could collect, um, you know, uh, anything from one word to, you know, a couple sentences. Um, this one is multiple choice. So if I want to say, um, what type of molecule is DNA? Um, and then I can write choices down here and say protein, amino acid, and I can add answers. I also have the option to make multiple correct answers. So if you look next to these, you can select whether they're right or wrong, and maybe all three of these answers are correct, which is not the case, but you can um, add multiple correct answers here. Again, you can add an image to that question if you want, and you have those same editing options. So I'm going to click Save. And this is how it will look to the students. So again, they will have to stop and answer the question first. And finally, the third type of question you can add, let me click this question one more time, is this third one over is, is a little speech balloon. That's not really a question at all, it's just an annotation. So if you want this, the video to have to stop there and you to add some sort of text, like, you know, um, please pause the video here and uh, draw a quick diagram in your notes, or um, remember we talked about cancer in class, this is the phase of cell division that goes wrong during cancer cells or something like that. You can add any sort of notation and, and make them stop and listen to it first. So when you are finished, you've cropped, you've added your audio notes, you've, if you wanted, dubbed over the audio track and you've added any sort of questions, you now have a, a video and you've turned it into a lesson. You've personalized it for your students, you've added your own personal touch, um, and you've added some sort of accountability in that they're answering questions and being able to pick out important information. So if you click on finish, it actually brings you to a class assignment screen. So I'm not going to do that, I'm going to click save. And now I'm going to click back out to Ed Puzzle here. If I click on the logo, it brings me back to the main screen because I want to show you where that went. So now if I click on the My Content button, 
there's the mitosis video I just created. Now from here, there's a couple cool options. And as you can see, um, you sort of have these uh, icons now in the video. So see how some of them have the red scissor, some of them have the green question mark. So you can see which tools I've used to edit these. So this one has crop and question. Uh, this one has crop, question, and audio notes. So this one has no edits at all. I'm just assigning a video to watch. So you can see which ones I've personalized and to what extent. So this is kind of cool. If I click on the video here, um, there is a button for sharing. So if I click share, I can actually click on share with anyone. And what's really nice is I can take this video or this link and I can email it to any of my colleagues. So if you work really hard on a video and you co-teach with another teacher or you want to share that lesson resource, you can actually take that link. And when they click on the link, what happens is it launches into their Edpuzzle account and asks if it, it wants to be added into their library. And of course, they just accept, which is really great. It's very cool. Um, you can also embed it if you like to use um, a website or a Schoology page. Um, but the easiest way to share these videos with your students is to assign them into classes. So now we're going to hop over to that class button, my classes, and this is very easy. There's no need to load a student roster. There's no need to set up usernames and passwords. Don't worry about all that. It's very easy. Okay, over here you have the left hand column that says at my classes. You can just click add class and let's just name a class. Let's say I'm going to teach a um, earth science class and hit enter. You may just want to name them like period one, period two, period five, whatever periods you teach. That's totally up to you. So now I have this class here and if I click on earth science, it says earth science here. Now all I have to do is click on invite my students and now it provides me with a code. I can now take that code and either write it on the board or, um, you know, put it on if they have Schoology pages or whatever. And now when they go to edpuzzle.com, they click log in as students and it says you have a class code. Now they can just enter the class code and it plops them right into your class. Easy peasy. They don't have to do anything. So as the students aggregate in your class, it'll say, see, see how these all say zero? It'll start to say how many students have piled up in that class. So it's very easy to invite them. They sign themselves up. When they sign in, they can also use their Google accounts, which is something they're going to be comfortable and familiar with. And they won't have to deal with another username and password, which is a win-win. So now I'm going to go back to my content and I'm going to click there's a couple things you could do here. You could click on this little check mark or you could click on the video itself. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to click assign slash share again. But this time under the assign to a class button, okay, I'm going to choose my earth science class. I'm going to put a check. You can also assign it to multiple classes at once. Um, there are a couple options down here too. I would always keep the prevent skipping uh, button highlighted and that's what we talked about. That prevents students from taking the slider bar and progressing fast forwarding in the video making it look like they watched the whole thing when they really just fast forwarded. You can also connect a due date to this which is nice because when they log into Edpuzzle it'll actually, you know, if you've given them multiple video resources to watch as assignments, they'll see which ones are due first and when. So you can select a due date for them. So I'll just say it's due tomorrow. And then I click send. So now when the students log in, as you can see, um, this actually, this is very similar to their screen. They log in and they see uh, earth science class, what do I have due? Um, and the nice thing is if they have multiple teachers using this, they don't need multiple accounts. They can just connect themselves to multiple classes via multiple class codes. Now, um, as students log in and watch the, the videos and progress their way through it by answering questions and watching it, um, you will see a percent completed uh, over here of the class and you will be able to see which students have progressed and how far through the, through the assignment. So you will be able to very easily check it um, for accountability um, or I actually have teachers that use this live in class and we'll just open this up and just assign a lesson for the kids to watch in class and we'll actually watch the students live um, completing it and working their way through it. 
So um, one more thing I want to share with you before I sign off here. I'm going to just go back to my content one more time. I wanted to show you one more little feature. I'm going to click on one of my video lessons here and there is a button here that says duplicate. So I'm going to click duplicate. And now I have two of the exact same video. So as you can see, it kept my crops and it kept my questions. So why would I want to do that? Well, let's say that I went, I went through and bothered to crop it. I went through and bothered to add questions and this and that. But now my, um, you know, my resource or collaborative teacher wants to go through and edit those questions or modify them or add some additional annotations. Now I can share this copy with them and I can say, you know, mitosis modified or something like that. Um, or, I mean, in the reverse direction, let's say I went through this whole thing and made it perfect for my general ed students, but then I have one honors class that I wanted to go through and either take some of the annotations out or I wanted to add some more challenging re uh, you know, questions in there, I, I can do that as well. Um, so that's a nice feature of Edpuzzle as well. Um, so that's sort of Edpuzzle in a nutshell. It's very easy to use. It's very simple. Um, I hope that you guys consider flipping a lesson. Um, again, don't feel like you have to delve all the way in when flipping your classroom. Try one or two lessons here and there and, and see how it goes for you. And I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, again, my email is Tina Bacolas. That's T-I-N-A-B-A-C-O-L-A-S at parkridge.k12. Dot nj dot us, and I'd be happy to help you if you run into any issues with this. Um, thank you guys and good luck.